Hearing none, uh, we have one final Zoom testifier, Dr. Sue Sisley. Dr. Sisley. Doctor, are you there? All right, uh, I don't see or hear Dr. Sisley, so we're gonna move on. One more, all right. Uh, oh, I'm, so okay. can you guys hear me? Oh, we yeah. can hear you, yeah, sure, please proceed, thank you. Hello? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you, please proceed. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, I, I couldn't hear you guys. Um, yeah, this is, um, I, my name is Sue Cicely. I'm a physician. I'm based in Arizona, but I actually serve as a volunteer medical director for over 40 different cannabis license holders in 18 different states over the past 11 years. Um, I wanted to share some ideas for how to keep your program medical if you guys do adopt a recreational model in Hawaii. Um, there is a, a, some methods of, of preserving the medical program, making sure it doesn't get steamrolled by rec. Um, I think the most important su subject is maintaining a legal frame for patient co-ops. Um, a, a great example, that co-op on the North Shore is has been extremely valuable to our veterans and terminally ill patients. The prices of licensed dispensaries, the, the prices of all these products are exorbitant, impossible for sick patients to afford, but the co-ops are offering um, legal access for a, an affordable price. So I hope that you can guarantee that these co-ops and home grow will always be a vibrant, fortified um, legal status within your program in perpetuity. Um, they should never be allowed to be removed by the industry as it continues to grow. I can tell you, I've been a medical director in many states that have added recreational cannabis later. And the first thing that happens once you convert to recreational is that the local license holders will sell their licenses or just sell their board seats to Lord, larger corporate behemoths, Cura Leaf, Verano, True Leaf, and then they will terminate medical staff like pharmacists and nurses that were hired yeah, mostly. You, as, have, you, have 30, you have 30 seconds. I'm going to ask okay, you to wrap Thank up. you. Yep. So, um, so I think once Hawaii licenses are eventually transferred to large MSOs and uh, your licenses get added to their investor decks and suddenly you've immediately lost the local control and the local pride that your residents insisted was important, keeping things local when you first started the medical program years ago. So be okay, careful. Doctor, with thank you so much. Oh, I'm yes. going to have to interrupt you at that point and I'm going to entertain questions from the task force for Dr. Sisley. Any task force members have questions for Dr. Sisley, please proceed. Hi, yes, this is Nico Sleverance. I would like to encourage Dr. Sisley to uh, submit uh, some written testimony on, on what she just talked about. I think it's a very important and salient topic uh, for the larger task force. Mahalo. Thank you. I, I pre Any appreciate that. Oh, I was going to mention, I did actually submit testimony online. So if you guys get a chance to review it, that would be great. Yeah, and we'll make sure the task force members get it if they haven't already. Any other task force members have any questions for Dr. Sisley? I, I do. Sure, please proceed, uh, Ms. Gore. This is Wendy Gibson Viviani. Uh, yes. Dr. Dr. Sisley, can you just briefly mention um, how legalization has created funding for cannabis research? Yes. Um, so what happened was actually the recreational marijuana never created research money. It was all the medical program. What happened was we took all of our accumulate, our surplus money from collecting licensing fees and card fees from patients. We had in Arizona over 10 years, we had raised almost a hundred million dollars in surplus funds that was voter protected. So it couldn't be um, swept by the legislature. And it was eventually used, we just allocated 25 million of the medical marijuana revenues toward um, do, uh, conducting FDA clinical trials on cannabis as a medicine for treating autism, pain, things like that. But 
the point is that recreational program has never contributed a dime to research and that's very sad. I hope that if you do implement a, med a rec program later that you insist that a portion of the tax revenue does go to research because it's really sad. In fact, the, the industry has not been supportive of, of May, allowing those tax revenues to go to research because they want to um, to go to the usual you know targets like education and um, and law enforcement, which are all really valuable and important. But ultimately, there's enough tax revenue to go around to actually support multiple different um, different entities that could um, that could benefit the advancement of science as well. So I hope that if you, I, I will tell you that the revenues generated from REC are not nearly what are projected ever in, in all these states that I work in. We always, they always, you always get these huge dollar signs put in front of the electeds and then ultimately it never really pans out that way, especially because the industry doesn't have banking yet. So the accounting okay. of this, you know, Doctors, is difficult. Just in the interest of, the interest of time, I'm gonna okay. just wanna entertain any, any more questions for the doctor specifically on the issue of federal preemption. Any other task I do, uh, Terry Gorman, co-chair of the uh, medical use PIG. Um, I would like to know if Dr. Sisley would be interested in uh, speaking with our group as an expert at a later time so we can have an in-depth discussion with her. Doctor? Uh, I would, yes, sir. I would love to help with that. And I tried to put that in my testimony, my written testimony that if you guys want me to do a more, I, I've listed several items in the testimony that could be helpful, but I'd like to uh, be, have a chance to elaborate on those in a future meeting yeah. and I'm happy to join yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ms. Gorman, Ms. Gorman, that sounds like a resounding yes. Yes, oh, thank you very yeah. much for that. Any, any other questions for uh, Dr. Sisley before we move on to our final online testimony? Hearing none, uh, the last 